when you, so before what you were doing was, Scott, like that's not that fun, okay. right? That's, that's interesting. Yeah. So what I did is I changed it and immediately had less reaction and more focus time. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today is gonna to be a really cool clip of a German Shepherd that has some reactivity issues like most German Shepherds, especially adolescent young German Shepherds. They see something, they get excited, they get mad, they get sad, they bark. So in this video, I show you guys a couple tips and routines and exercises to counter condition the reactivity in a balanced way, which means we're always gonna reward the dog for the behavior we wanna keep around. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to demonstrate some sort of consequence or correction to the dog when they decide to say, nope, I don't care what you say and I'm gonna just completely react. You can come in. How are we doing? Pretty good. Good. Hey, buddy. Today, what I'd like to do is, a, is two things. I want to focus on obedience training, the first half, and then the second half, I want to focus on more behavioral training to see if we can get specific triggers out of them. Good boy. All right, so. All right, that's what I want to work on, <laughs> is leave it. <laughs> so what I'm doing really quickly, just to tell you guys, is I'm creating a leave it command for the dog, because what happens with Scott is he gets very reactive when you is introduced to somebody he doesn't know. So applying the leave it command with food, creating as a positive experience, will down the line translate into something a lot more beneficial and effective. Um, so instead of diving right in and doing the leave it command as he's in that high stimulated mind, we're just using it with lower dis stimulation, lower distraction with food. Uh, I'm gonna give him the food first so he knows what I'm using. Oh, buddy. Good, Good boy. Oh. He's heck yummy. Oh, good boy. Okay, you ready? So that's that's where you were. Can you leave it? Yeah. It's okay. So we'll work on that because that's gonna transfer, we're gonna copy and paste that to, this is food, so this is a positive thing that he's trying to engage in, but you're gonna use your obedience when it becomes negative and he's growling towards people. Okay. So let's just practice to see how, yeah, <laughs> to see how clear. So I'm gonna throw it, and as I throw it, you're gonna say leave it at the same time. Okay. Uh, people get in the habit of correcting as they say it. Okay. Don't do that, okay, right. unless he goes. All right. Because you're, cueing him, leave it, and I want him to basically comply. Okay. But if you're correcting him as you're asking him, it's not going to be fair for him. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I got it. Okay, so I'm gonna throw it, and you're gonna say leave it as I do it, okay? okay. Leave it, leave, leave Good, it. okay. So obviously it's not um, 100%, so we're gonna work right. on that. But I, I just wanna create that clarity. So I'm gonna pay him for leaving it, because that's kind of like the the process. Because um, he's because you don't want you don't want him to become frustrated. We're like this is teasing. You say hey you left it with two pieces of food. I'm gonna then reward you at the source. Good. So we're just gonna do that a couple more times. Good. Leave it. And so there you didn't have to give him any pressure. So that is telling us that he's complying when you say versus just expecting um, and relying on the equipment, which is good, which is the goal actually. So use your leave it, and if he doesn't comply this time, that's the decision that he's made. So that's where you give him pressure. So right there, leave it. Leave it. Good, and then just go the other way. Good. And then you stay on that side for a second, and I'm gonna bring uh, my friend Georgie out. Georgie. Okay, so this is going to be a, a hybrid step, I call it, which means it's it's far more distracting than food on a leave it, but it's not as distracting as a real dog. So it's in the middle, it's a hybrid. So, um, and the other thing is, is this is really safe because it's a controlled environment. So you should be really calm doing this as well because it doesn't have a heartbeat. Just come forward just a, just a bit. And then you, you let him out with the leash. Just don't drop the leash, just let him come forward. 
We're gonna do the temperament testing. 101. Not yet. I want to. I, I want to see the the behavior at its core without any altercation from the human. Well, this is weird. This is a weird, non-moving, weird-looking dog. It's not a normal dog, um, and you're enclosed on the leash. So you back up. Don't say anything. Just walk backwards. Okay. Stop for a second. Reward him for. So when he looks at you, reward him for that. I think a lot of that is very vocalization. I don't think a lot of it is stemming from aggression, although I don't think it's a positive thing. I definitely think it's negative. Um, but I think he's just being a shepherd, being vocal. Um, I think it's alarming for him. I think he's going, hey, hey, um, because we're not getting the bark. Um, if I move him, we are gonna see more reactivity and more stimulation than we just saw. Um, but that's gonna be stepping the game up a little bit. But these are the things that you need to do when you're temperament testing him with obedience and other dogs. Where like I said last time, before we temperament tested him with people, which we may have an opportunity to do later, I just don't know. And then stop and you just let him out. Good, and then stop, good, perfect. So um, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm judging his behavior based off his body language. <clears throat> so if we look at his ears, we look at his tail, we hear his vocalization, um, and we see his eyes. So the tail swinging like that um, is, it, see how it's like in the middle? Yeah. That's never like a great thing. Um, his ears are obviously perked up. I'm gonna see if I can disengage with him with food. Scott, yes, oh, good boy. So what I want you to do is work on a, work, work, on, work on getting his attention back to you. Jeez, okay. um, he's a shark. Um, and see if you can see if we can decrease the the stimulate or the the reactivity um, or the stimulation, I guess, with the other dog, with food engagement and positivity. Um, there's balance to that though. Making sure we also give him some sort of punishment if he decides not to listen because it's going to get him in trouble. So we can beat around the bush and say, just be treats and rainbows and butterflies all day. It's going to be great. No, it's actually not going to be great because if he makes a decision to say, I'm just going to attack this dog, lawsuit, death. Yeah bills not good so we are going to correct him um, whatever you feel comfortable either hey good we have to be very careful how we do this because we definitely don't want to associate the reward system that we're doing with the growl so don't do what i just did when he's growling don't redirect him up here i want you when he growls i want you to say scott yes like that when he makes a decision to look at you that's when you pay him. Do not go down and reward him for that because if you're looking at a timing system with animals, the way that they operate is, is when he does that, the food comes out and then back up. He doesn't care where it's coming from. What I want is I want the behavior to be paid and rewarded when he actually does what I want instead of redirected. Okay. So that's a, it's a skillful thing that you have to do ex exactly. So when he's growling, looking that way, You'd say, hey, buddy, and he looks at you and you say, yes, good decision. You've taken your, your, your okay. right? Um, Zach, you want to cut up some more treats and then I'll have you just grab some of the treats on there. Okay. Yeah. So I want you to come up and I want you to put him into a heel. I'm going to move this dog around. He's going to growl again. Redirect him with a focus or his name. Pay him when he looks at you. And so we're, we're doing counter conditioning with, um, with obedience to get him to stop looking at the dog. But again, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. That's not always gonna work when you're out in public. Absolutely not, not a chance in hell. You have to understand also, is there gonna be times where the dog is gonna be overstimulated for him or too stimulated, and you're gonna to need to correct him for going past that boundary and ignoring you, okay? Good. So, yes, good, so good, that was good. Just be careful on, like don't, I did it too. And, and I made a mistake as well, and you did the same thing. Yeah, don't do that. Just, but it's so natural for you because you, you're trying to shortcut the end goal, but in, in the dog behavior, it's, hey, what food, right? But then he's gonna go right back, and you definitely don't want him to associate that behavior with that food delivery. So go the other way. Good. Now just try to, so to hold him, don't let him get too close. And the only reason why I say that is because um, once he realizes this is bogus, all this will stop, and it won't help us. So try to, yes, pay him. Good, good. So see how he made a decision to say, hey, what are you up to over, over here anyway? And you paid him. So then what's gonna happen is, is the micro is, is he stopped looking at the dog. That's the small picture. The big picture or the macro is the fact that when he's out in a leash, he's learning a behavior that if he looks at you, he's gonna get rewarded no matter what else is going on, which is what you want with him. 
because he's reactive. Like he's like, hey dog, rawr, hey person I don't know, rawr. So if you, start a, if you start an association where he looks at something and then looks at you and he gets paid, he's gonna be on you. And, but you, it's, it's a bit of free shaping. Um, and so free shape training um, is, is basically a dog does a, beha a, dog does a behavior. Yes, good. A dog does a behavior and, and then you pay them for that. Um, that's kind of what free shaping is. It's kind of what you're doing, um, where he's like doing something and then he does something that you want and you pay him and he captures it. Um, and he, he associates that, that's what you're trying to do here. So I'm gonna heal him around. You're gonna put him right there. Heal, I'm gonna heal him around. Every time that he looks at you versus looking at the dog negatively, you're going to then pay him. What if he just looks at me without growling? Uh, you can say whatever you're gonna mark that command as, focus, watch, spaghetti, it doesn't matter what you say, you, but you're gonna mark it now, um, mark it. So if he knows that this dog is moving, but he's making a better decision to look at you because you've been paying him, good, good, whatever it is. Yes, good, good. Now we're gonna do that again. Yes, good. 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 So it's just, you're in a predicament because it's a little hard because he doesn't really know the behavior that well. So it's hard to correct him for not doing it because he doesn't know it. You can't correct the dog if they don't know how to do it right, that sort of thing. Um, so let's try um, you healing him around. And when you come back, put him in a sit position right next to you. Don't let him out in front of you. So go to the gate and come back. Yeah, so in, in, this, in this exercise, we are, in the dog training world, we're doing what's called operant conditioning. We're rewarding the behavior we want to keep around. We're correcting the behavior we are not accepting. Okay. Just like kids. Inside voices, outside voices. If you scream and yell inside while everyone's doing homework or resting, you're gonna get put in the corner or you're gonna get a timeout. It's exactly what we're doing with him. Um, and he knows his punishments. He knows uh, the punishment with the prong and all that stuff. So um, try to, let's do this. Try the exercise. When he looks at you, get his attention, just make a noise. He looks at you, good look or whatever you're doing. And try that exercise a little bit before I get this going. And then we're gonna try it when I get it going. So try that. Yeah, your eyes, yes. Good. And then when you do that, so this, this is good. So when you're standing there with the reward behind your back and you tell him, Ultimately, you could have him target anything, your shoulder, your eyes, your nose, whatever. When he looks at your eyes or your face, try to go here and then down. Okay. Because the problem with rewarding him like you did is he looks at your eyes and then you pay him from a different location. Okay. And so then he's gonna constantly, because at this stage, it's like re realistically, he's only looking for the food because he doesn't know the behavior. So making sure that when he looks at your face, you come up with the food and pay him from your face so he knows that the face recognition is actually what is what's dinging that payment. Ding, 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 right? Not from here, because then if you pay him from here, he's just gonna look here. Right. So uh, just make sure you're doing that. So okay. go to the gate and come back and do it again. But even like, see how he just looked at you? I, I would, cause he's developing this behavior. So like when he looks right at your face, pay him every time. It's okay, it's, it's okay. Good, good. And you don't have to always pay him with the food. You can pay him with good luck. So even if you're on the fly and you don't have a piece of food and he's looking, yeah, right there, good, perfect. Um, because you don't always like, you telling your dog, good boy is, is a, yeah, is a good enough reward. They don't need food. Food is cherry on top. Yeah. Like it, you don't have to have it. It helps, but so yeah, yeah, that was good. So now what he's doing is he's starting to like, oh, this is getting me some food. Yep, good. So when he when he does that, try to try to do more verbal, good luck, good luck, good luck, just good luck, good, just like that, okay. to really drive it in because you're not always gonna have food. And that's unrealistic, it's unfair, it's not gonna work. So. Good. When he looks at you, just, just tell him good luck. You don't have to pay him at all with food. Just okay. tell him good luck. Because um, you can just hammer it in like, good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. Then maybe pay him. Okay. But I want you to get in the habit of having the ability and, and reward system to pay him without constantly giving him that food. Okay. And that's how you do that. Good luck, good luck. Yes, good luck, buddy. Yes, good luck, good luck, good luck. And then maybe then you pay him. Okay. You don't always have to give him food. Just, just you talking high pitch to your dog looking at them is going to be enough chemicals going off to say i like this 
could. Yes, good. Well done. Good. Yep, good. And just remember to just try to pay him from your face. It's okay. I'm just, I'm yeah, gonna stay on you about it. Um, okay, so now we're gonna do that sequence again with the dog moving. Uh, a little slow, but we sat. So do, do you like, yep. Good. Here, so here's one thing I want you to try. I want you to do that for me. I'll see the food. Good. Good boy. Good. So here's what I want you to do is when you're doing this, Scott, look. Look. Yes. Good look. Yes. Good. Look. Yes. Good look. Good. So go ahead and, and move that around. Scott, look. Yes. Good look. Yes. Good look. So have way more. Look. Uh -uh. Yes. Good look. Good look, buddy. Good look. Yes. Good boy. Look. Yes. Good look. Well done. Good look. Yes. Good boy. Scott. Yes. Good look. Good boy. Good look. Yes. Good boy. Good look. Oh, well done. Good boy. Okay, break. Good boy. Stay right there. I'm going to reset that. Okay. I want you to really capture what I'm doing here. Okay. Look. Yes. Good boy. Good. That's good. Um, but you see the difference, no reactivity at all. Um, but also his, his engagement with me was way better because you have to understand that you can't think like a human when you're training a dog. I should probably write that down. <laughs> but uh, you're thinking like, hey, do this. Like right now, like when you, so before what you were doing was, Scott, like that's not that fun, okay. right? That's, that's interesting. So what I did is I changed it and immediately had less reaction and more focus time. Cause I made what I was doing with him. Like, it's kind of like, uh, I don't have any kids, but uh, my brother, I have nieces. It's kind of like, like who wants to do the dishes? It's like, you're almost tricking them to do something that they probably wouldn't normally want to do, like ignore another dog. So the difference was, and what you need to start doing is really make the, the exercise that you're doing more fun than what that is, or at least match it. So this video is a walkthrough exercise that I personally think is gonna be super informative for anybody out there working on leash reactivity, barking at other dogs when you're out for a walk, etc. It's a lot of positivity. I'd say 97% of this, and like the, all the training that we do, a lot of positivity to shape and capture behaviors. And so that's what this video is. I hope you guys enjoy it thoroughly. And if you do, support the YouTube channel, like this video, wherever it is, subscribe to my channel, turn on the little bell, so you guys get notified every single time I upload. I talk to you next time. Peace.